really, I really did it with You them. go all out with them. I try, I try. I'm going to get crazy with them. Yeah, it's been crazy. It's been a crazy week. But let's dive in. Episode 85, Jobins. What the fuck's up? Been a minute. Sorry we didn't get an episode out last week. Super busy. Um, yeah. Brendan, how was your week? Oh, my God, man. My week's been crazy, dude. Just closed on a home equity line of credit. Let's go. Bank-related stuff. Ooh, that's really fun. But... I don't even remember. I don't think we talked about it on the pod. You had to play detective or some shit. Dude, I was playing like a police officer, Jobins. Get this. I was freaking working. And then like this guy came in and he was trying to get money from uh, one of our tellers there. Or a banker. It's another banker. And then like um, they had an ID that was out of state. A Missouri ID of all places. We had a freaking Missouri ID. And then it was uh, from a, a... guy that came in and he was trying to withdraw money from someone that he was claiming to be and then we called the no we didn't call but we already had gotten an email saying that there was a fraudster and it was this guy's name and he of course it was the same name on the id then uh they were like brendan can you go over uh and then and then like they were you know we were discreet so he wouldn't know but i went over to my desk and then i was like oh i guess they're doing some stuff over here and then i like was I called 911 and I was on the phone with the like the 911 dispatcher for like freaking 15 or 20 minutes, Jobin, seriously. Happened to keep this guy distracted or something? Yeah, the other bankers were talking to him like our systems are down. It's really weird. You know, we're trying to get this up so we can pr- uh, process your withdrawal. And he was like, this is bullshit. You know, like he's getting frustrated at the end. The, the fact that he was there that long, though, I was like, I'm surprised we got the guy. I'm surprised <laughs> they don't get away all the time <laughs> with how long it took. And she, she was like, oh, there's someone coming down right now. Oh, they'll be there soon. And then this guy, he's like, oh, I'm going now. And then he walks out. Of course, the cops freak out. I see the cops come right at him. He's like, what is this? I can hear him yelling out there. They bring the guy back into the bank. I was like, he's got to look at all of us now. And if he ever gets out, it's like, I'm killing you. I'm killing you. And I'm killing you. Thanks, police officers of Peoria. Really appreciate it. Now the guy knows my face. You know, I'm like, oh, yeah. Hey, hey, we're the ones that got you. Yeah, I'm going to, if I die, it's you guys. Don't bring them into the bank. What the hell? Anyways, we, we they caught him. <laughs> that happened. And I was like, just, man, it's just crazy. Be careful with your identity. Don't give your stuff out. And then uh, the guy was, yeah, it was craziness, though. I had to fill out a police I report. I bet, dude. It sounds like it. And then it, we got pulled over those weeks ago because they yeah, said there was a fraudster with the Missouri plate. Well, that's what I'm saying. I feel like they got the guy. They got the guy who got me in trouble. That's what I feel like. They're just printing off Missouri or, IDs all day. Yeah, if, or if there's that many people out here with Missouri shit going on and they're doing all this fraud, I don't know, man. We're no fraud. I'm too broke to be a fraud guy. You know what I mean? Or for people who do fraud have money. <laughs> I don't know how that shit works. But no, I'm glad. That would be a little, uh, little heart beating. Yeah, dude. You heart pounding. You want to hear a crazy story, it's Jovens? Like, that's banking related is my dad. He t- told me this story before. He's like, he had the FBI came and they got this guy. And the dad, my dad said this. He's like, my one request is don't arrest him in front of me. Yeah. What do they do? They do it in front of him. And the guy's like, I'm going to fucking kill you. He looked at you. <laughs> Dude, I, if I remember the story correctly and how my dad tells it, he was like, I will There's fucking kill you. you <laughs> before the cops. You know? Got to put his hands. He said, I'm going to fucking, fucking kill, kill you. you and it's like, Jesus. <laughs> and he's like, the one thing I asked is that you don't arrest him in front of me. And it's like, they don't care. It's like the cops, they're just like, we got to do it here. I appreciate everything the police officers do. Thank you so much for your protection and everything you do out there. But do it outside of the bank so we don't get murdered. I gotta get my shit together. Wow. Um, Yeah, that would make me want to change careers. I couldn't sleep at night going. (laughs) Your wife's like, honey, how was your day? And I'm just like, well, I got this guy arrested. And he said he was going to fucking kill me. I swear, dude. Be out. We're, dude, Jobins, we're sorry. It's, uh, oh, God. It's like 1045 Friday night. It's late. A couple shorts in us, and I had not yeah. me. <laughs> and you. I had four, okay? Yeah. 
I just got that's, super That's stoned. eight Canadian uh, eight Canadian double shots is where like would like yeah. to say. Dude, your size it damn well is eight shots, dude. You fuck, you're 109 pounds. Oh, dude, I'm feeling good. We worked out. We've you're been looking good, man. It. I was looking at you today with your shirt. I don't know if it was the shirt because it was 10 times your size. Oh, my God. It's not a dress. It's a tank top. Okay. Yeah. It's maybe a size larger. But you were looking jacked. I'm proud of you. Keep mm-hmm. going. Oh, yeah. You just need to keep going. I appreciate that, brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's funny bank stories. Jobins, your boy Schmitty, I went on a date. Uh, kind of like a blind date, to be honest. That was my first time ever kind of going on a date like that. Just um, meeting a girl on Instagram, shooting a shot. Shoot, I, I How'd did. you shoot your shot again? Like, how did it just kind of all start? Uh, so she liked the photo I posted with Sean back in Las Vegas. And she had followed me. This is what I think. And I had followed her. Maybe I followed her first, and then she followed me. I don't remember. Uh, and then she started liking my photos and stuff. I'm like, and then I was with you. I was like, dude, should I just shoot my shot? And you're like, yeah. And then that's when I asked her, and then I just did it. And to be honest, I don't usually do that. I mean, and she th- caught your eye, right? So. I know. I know. But, like, I think it's all you got to do, man. Mm-hmm. You know, cause I got to take some notes here. I know. You got to take some fucking notes, dude, because, you know, we're shy, Jobins. I tell every, you know, everyone's reaction when I'm like, yeah, I'm a shy guy. They're all like, no, you're not. And I'm like, I'm shy. Dude, I'm shy. Mm-hmm. When it comes to chicks or like when you go, when I go to a club with the boys or something, I'm shy. I'm, it's, I'm shy. That's when I'm shy. When we were at that penthouse, it took me to get a little tipsy until I wasn't shy. Yeah. I got to work on my smoothness. I'm just a very direct, very fast person. I'm just like. Want us to say what it is right away, you know? <laughs> There's no smoothness to it. There's no well. Some game girls like that behind it. Some girls like that straight shooters. Yeah. Some Tim. But watches. it's like I don't even. You know, you got to do the approach though. You got to take your shots, like you're saying. So. Oh. In a good, in a nice, smooth way. You don't want to be forceful or anything like mm-hmm. Sonos or. <laughs> <laughs> shots fired. Yeah, shots fired. He's gonna be our third guy, so we got to get it started. Yeah, yeah. Start to. We got to get it rolling. We got to get it rolling. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But yeah. The Jobins, the date. How, well, how'd it go, Schmidt? I think it went really well. Um, took her to Bubba's 33, which that's where mm. me and you went, which Jobins. The first time me and this dude go there, we're walking out, right? And the, all of a sudden, the waitress, she's like, um, we're going to have you guys take the side exit. And we're like, okay. We're walking around. All right. Yeah, and then we're seeing this group of people, and we're walking, and then this dude is, like, lifeless, and they're like, oh, they're saying his name. They're like, come back to Miss Jimmy or something like that. Dude, how much did that fucking scar you, right? But then I'm like, here we are, walking to a movie theater. It, in that moment, I was like, grateful. I was like, whoa, here we are, just walking to a movie theater, and someone's having a fucking life altering thing right now. You know what I mean? And it I was, was fucked up. It was you know what I was thinking? Up. I was like, I hope the dude's okay. Did he even get to experience the shotgun shrimp? Oh, dude. Did he? It was delicious. That was a dark. The shotgun shrimp <laughs> was such a good appetizer. No. Respect to Bubba's 33. But yeah, <laughs> like that could have been his last meal. Hopefully he is okay, like you said. Yeah, yeah for real. Because that just, it fucked me up. It fucked me up. We are fragile beings, yeah. you know, made of muscle it and bone. It made me appreciate, again, even like how we were talking earlier. Just like, because I saw this video. It fucking freaked me out. This dude's fishing. I don't know. It's kind of going viral right now. And he's catching this fish out of the water and it spins around, rips his pinky right off. Oh, and he's so casual. He goes, Oh, there goes my goddamn pinky. Like, like nothing. You know what I mean? And everyone in the comments is like, Oh, he says it's so casual. I'd be freaking out. And I'm like, yeah, dude, your pinky's gone forever. Yeah. Imagine not having your pinkies, dude. Like, I know. Sorry to the people who don't have their pinkies if they don't, if they're watching. Everything you have on your body, oh, you should just be grateful for. Cause yeah. it could be gone and never come back. You know? Yeah. Like your ears, your eyes, yeah. your feet. But this guy pulled his eye out today at the bank. He was like, I got this eye is fake. And I just did it. And I, I like, love oh. people with who, who have that. They love doing that to people. Mm-hmm. Shout out to you guys. Because I find that shit funny and fascinating. Because I'm always like, holy shit. We had a kid that take it out in high school all the time. My dad would tell me stories about how they had kids and they rolled on the desk table and then put it back. <laughs> I'm I like, would do funny shit like that if I had a fake eye. Oh, dude, eyes, man. Oh, it freaks me out, too. Like, the, you know. like you think about getting poked, and now your eye's gone? 
Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, we need to get you to get on a on a date, man. Because mm-hmm. you need to get talking to some chicks. I know. I, I, you can do it. You can do it. You're good. You're way better looking than me. Uh, You're way more in shape. Yeah, I guess so. I'll, I'll, I'll go and agree with uh, you. Sure. Because, yeah, dude, I was nervous when I went on this date. Blind date, meeting a girl from Instagram. You never met him. Going on this place. I'm hoping the place is cool enough. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's Bubba's 33. And, like, there's so many cool places to go to in Phoenix. How did the ordering go? Did you order for her or did like you guys no. order independently? Well, drink wise, yeah. But it, uh, you no. ordered for her you're for gonna, the drinks? No, no, drink wise, she ordered her own drink. Okay. Hey, but you're going to laugh at me. No, I'm listening. I might have got a girly drink. What did you get? Oh, I have some like uh, mango, f- not mango. Ooh, that's a good no, flavor. No, not mango, not mango. Some like it was like a red fruit one. Not raspberry, some other not dragon fruit, some cr- I forget. Did you enjoy it? I did. That's all that matters. If you enjoyed it and it was good. Yeah, and I even made jokes with her about it. You know, that was the thing too. We were both laughing a lot, having a great time, and uh, Sono is all like, "Oh, well, did you smash me?" And I'm like, "Sono, the dude acts like a Christian, guys. Dude acts like a Christian. He's like, did you even smash?" The guy who acts like a Christian also can lie about being a baseball player sometimes. Yeah. Did you even smash? And it's like, dude, it's not all about smashing. What do you mean? And it's like, <laughs> that's amazing. bro, yeah, dude, I can just hear him say it. What, what do you mean? It's like, don't you enjoy just being around chicks? It was so nice going on a date with this girl. Mm-hmm. And not only was she really pretty, dude, she was so cool. I had a cr- I got, a, I, I'm bad, dude, because I got a fucking crush. She's super cool. She made me fuck. She, we were both making each other laugh. Very relatable. Yeah, I mean, she's a baddie and she has similar interests. And yeah, you're dude. also, oh, at she this- likes UFC. I like smoking weed. I'm like, damn it. But yeah, maybe we'll have a second date. We'll see. We'll yeah, see down yeah. in the future. But you, my friend, if I, what I'm trying to get at is if I can do this, if I can go and be nervous, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And just go up and do it. You just got to go do it. You can do it too. True, true. And any Jobin's watching. Word. You can do it. Hopefully so. see a better movie when we do it too. Because we've seen a few movies that you haven't been vibing to. Hold on. What, 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 what? I was saying, if I take a girl out, I better make sure that there's good movies out. Oh, yeah. Well, well, that's the thing, too. Like, if there were to be a second date, I want to do something fun. You know Ooh. what I mean? Like, you want to go do something fun. Like the girls. aquarium or something? something? Or, like, maybe the throwing axes. There's a lot of shit to do here in Phoenix. We got to just figure it out. We're new to the game. We're new to the game, Jobins. But, yeah. That's been our weeks. Oh, Jobins. Uh, this video of me being... Uh, Sean's Mr. Bodyguard has kind of gone a little viral and I just find it fascinating that something when you do something so little like that when it is funny it was funny but it was just kind of little you know what I mean and it just sparked a lot of things and how fucking cool was hearing Chael Sonnen talk about it he's like I think his name was Schmitty yeah they gave him like one name or something it was like Schmitty yeah the guy Chael's awesome I've been like you said we were, you were probably like, what, 13 and I, or 12, 13, I was probably 15. 15, 14, one yeah. or two. When we're watching Chael almost beat Anderson Silva. Five rounds to that triangle choke yeah. at the end. In our oh boy Dan God. Schiller's living room back in home. And then if you would have told me like, hey, that guy's going to, gonna, he's going to see a video you're in and mention you. I'd be like, what the fuck? It's just crazy, Jopins. And the fact that I was even in the background for Ariel Hawani interview with Sean like thank you Sean for letting me do that with you blood because dude I've been watching Ariel we've been I've been watching UFC for 15 years I was big fan of Ariel back in the day when he would be in the back of the UFC fights and uh, interviewing all the fighters and Rampage getting him shit about his shoes all the time because Ariel back in the day he probably still does it back in the day Ariel would be all dressed up in his suits but then he'd have sick ass shoes on Mm -hmm. and all the fight and sometimes Rampage and shit would give him shit about it Dude, he gets everybody on the MMA hour. Oh, yeah, dude. Well, now he's, you know, he's like the number one guy, but he's come such a far way since the come such a come Since little Dana White being like, that guy's a pussy. Oh, yeah. He used <laughs> to piss off Dana White all the time. And he, I loved it. And he, he would piss Dana White because he was asking the right questions. Yeah. So shout out to you, Ariel Hawani. Shout out, Sean, for letting me have that moment. Uh, it was funny not breaking character. It was a little tough standing there for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, my feet were getting a little like uh, numb. 
and I was super little. I was getting hot. But uh, the hardest part was not laughing because I know how Ariel talks, but I can't hear him. And then I'm just imagining what he's saying based on what Sean's reactions are. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, Sean's reactions, like, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm surprised his knees haven't buckled yet. And I'm just, I'm dying. It was really hard not to laugh. That was the hardest part. Now you're his bodyguard. Yeah, now I'm permanent bodyguard. Going to play bodyguard tomorrow. We got a busy, fun day tomorrow, Jovens. He's doing some meet and greets. Me and Brennan get to go. I get to play fucking bodyguard. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a good time. Dude, Sean's picking us up in a sprinter van. How fun is that? I'm so fucking excited for that. I've never been in a Sprinter van, so the, the first time with you and Sean and everybody, it's going to be lit. And then playing bodyguard and seeing everybody. Dude, seeing all the fans, too. and yeah. like it's Seeing gonna all be, the Jobins. Yeah, it's going to be badass. Yeah, t- tomorrow's going to be a good day. And then we got the fights, dude. Oh, Holy my shit. God. Did you put the notes? Because I didn't. You're yeah, my note, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the fights. I got the fights. You're taking over for the fights. We can start off the prelims because I, I didn't do the early prelims. There's a lot. There's a ton of <laughs> fights on this Ooh, card. Hold on. Before we do this fight cards, can we recap? We were we're so far behind, dude. Jobins, I just gotta apologize to Patty and Molly, dude. Oh, I yeah. talked mad shit on our last pod. I'm like, oh, Patty's probably might lose. Molly's fight's gonna be boring. Holy fucking shit, was I wrong? Their fights were amazing. How amazing was that? Yeah, they were incredible. What a power team, dude. And then Patty to choke that dude out like that—that that was fucking badass. Her to have another backing. I wonder if Dana was like, oh, we'll never see a spinning noble like that again. Boom. He, she did it again, Dana. Thank you for proving our point, Molly. And then Patty's fucking post-fight interview about his buddy. Yeah. How fucking touching was that? Sad. You're the fucking man, Patty, for putting the spotlight. In. Sorry, it took your friend for you to have to, like, for that situation to even be brought up and set talked about. Right. Prayers to your fucking friend. But what a way to capitalize on it and say the right thing. Especially like, in a sport where it's like toughness is the name of the game. Right? You can cry on my shoulder any day, Brennan. I hope you know that. Yeah. You know I'd be like, at first I'd be like, what are you, what's wrong, dude? Like, <laughs> you can cry on my, I'd be like, meanwhile, dude, very judgmental face. I'd be like, dude, why are you crying? No, I'm just kidding. What why the- are you crying? Can you stop crying before you tell this me? This is a manly household. This is how we do. Things. Can you stop crying before you tell me? No. <laughs> <laughs> you look ugly when yeah, you like, cry. Dude, get a Kleenex. Clean it up. <laughs> no. Yeah, but shout out to Patty, definitely. Yeah. No, yeah. Dude, it, it hit. How can you not love Patty? He's got a certain feeling about him, doesn't he? He's, he's like Sean and Connor and all those guys. He's just got a certain feeling. Mm-hmm. He's got it outside. He's got it inside. He's got it. Uh, characteristic wise, yeah. it's not a bad. Hopefully, if he were to get money, he doesn't go down a dark path like some fighters have gone. Sean's done a great. I don't see Sean ever getting in uh, trouble with law. No, no. He's too so. He's so fucking and straight-minded. He, and he's not that kind of person when he's partying. Probably, you uh-uh. know, like to want to do something right? illegal. You That's know? what I love too. Because back at home, man. We'd hang out with people and you know they get drunk and they want to be violent. Yeah. When right, Sean gets right. drunk, holy fuck, how hard do we laugh when Sean's fucked up? Mm-hmm. He just wants to have a good time and you're laughing your ass off. Yeah. I know it is it's crappy when you have someone and you're drinking with someone and they're like that. And, and they ruin and they're the like, time. They're like, oh, yeah, I got to be the tough guy. So yeah. let's start some shit. And the loud one. I got to be the loud, tough guy. In the yeah, room. It's like, oh. yeah, it's toxic. Yeah. It's good to have fun, man. Yeah. But yeah, shout out to uh, Patty and Molly because those fights were fucking insane. Poor Tom Aspinall, too. I was so oh, upset. Three weeks, in, dude, like three weeks in a row where things like that, unfortunate things happen. Yeah, Dana White's just got to be like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah. That would suck really bad. Hopefully, I didn't even know what's happened. Does anyone say it in the comments? Smooth Jones, recovery for Tom, know. I hope. Yeah. Hopefully. Good luck, Curtis Blades, on your next. Pa- Curtis Blades deserves to go up and fight the next. Oh yeah, and there's so, dude, so much is going on right now. Holy shit. Yeah. All right, go ahead now with the fights. Let's go. With the some, fights. So the first fight of the prelims mm-hmm. is our boy Drakkar Klaus, man. Hold on, they're the first fight. They're of the, the prelims? first fight of the prelims. Dude, let's go. I'm so fucking excited. I didn't know he was the first fight. Yeah, he's 12, 2, and 1, but he's fighting Rafa or uh, Rafa Garcia. Yeah, and this guy's who's 14 ta- and 2. Yeah, and this guy's taking the fight on short notice because he was supposed to fight somebody else, but that something happened. Dude, Jakar's scary on the stand up though, and like. You know what I love about Jakar? 
He is such a good fucking dude, Jobins. He is the nicest guy. Again, this is one of those fighters where if you didn't know he was a fighter, you'd have no clue. Mm -hmm. And when he trains, he's super serious. But then a lot of the times, he's having fun with everybody. I know. That's what scares me about the guy. Yeah. It's like he has fun going to war. Yeah, have, dude. Yeah, think about that kind of mindset. It's like, and he throws these wild things at people, and there's he's smiling at them, and they're all laughing. That would it, probably break me. I'd be like, this guy's yeah. just having too much fun. It's in this definitely war. a unique... He's very unique in his training. It's fun to watch. He's ve And he's just such a nice guy. Him and Courtney and their kid's so adorable. Mm -hmm. It's like, how could you not fucking love this guy and root for him? And he's so good, too. I think he could be champ. I'm, how can we not root for Drakkar? I know. That would be badass. Let's go. I think he's going to knock him out in the first round. I got Drakkar knockout first round. I'll do the same. I, I think it's the same, dude. He touched yeah. up that last guy so many times. Short yep. notice fight, too. Let's see him fucking touch him. Yep. Dude, the second fight's going to be against heavyweights, Don Tale Mayas versus, uh, this is a hard one, Hamdi Abdel Wahab. I don't really know either of these guys. Yeah, Don Tale has 9 4, uh, 9 wins, picture. 4 losses. Hamdi, this guy sounds familiar, he's 5 0, he's undefeated, has a pretty relatively short record. I don't know how many amateur fights he's had. But uh, I'm, I'm going to go him. Hamdi. Same. same. He's 5-0. He, oh. He's outside. His, his name's Should've harder to pronounce. Notes. He's probably just a killer. Jobins, I've been super busy. I didn't do my notes on this one, so I'm just going off the top of the dome. My bad. The next fight. Get Drew Dober. Yeah, third fight of the prelims Rafael. is Drew Dober versus Rafael Alves. Alves. That's a nice fight, dude. That's a really good fight. Yeah. 24 and 11 is our boy Drew, and Rafael Alves is 20 and 10. And Drew Dober just had that really impressive win over uh, McKinney. Dude. He's durable. Drew Dober is well. He's just that well-rounded guy. And he's still he's still beatable at the same time. He's a yeah. good. He's definitely a top guy. And yeah. I, I definitely think that he can maybe prove himself and get up to that top echelon. You know, I'm gonna go Drew Dober 100. percent This fight's I'm, gonna be violent, dude. I'm gonna go decision Drew Dober. I think decision? it's gonna be a war. I think it's gonna be a freaking battle. I don't know, Rafael. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I want Drew to win. I'm going Drew. I'm going Drew. All right, next. Fourth fight, Alex Morano. He's 21 Ooh. 7 and 0 versus Matthew Semelsberger, 10 and 3. Didn't he fight not that long ago and it was pretty impressive? It, yeah, I think he had a pretty good win that he Maybe got I'm out. I'm going him. I'm going to go Alex Morano. I think his experience I'm is going to get it done in the welterweight division. Go, Matthew. All right, next. But that was for the prelims. Now it's on to the main card. Let's go. The first fight of the main card is a freaking... The first fight, Jovens, is a freaking blaze barn burner. Magomed Ankalaev. The burn is on Mag fire. Magomed Ankalaev, 17-1 versus our boy Anthony Lionheart Smith, 36-16. and 16. Let's dude, that's go. that's a fucking fight, dude. Seven that is a one. fight. Magomed's not the... He's not like Khabib in Islam. You know what I'm saying? He actually is kind of fights more stand-up. And I've seen him not be the greatest... Anthony Smith is gonna get this guy. I got my. I'm sad. I'm so sorry. What? Anthony Smith. I love you, Anthony Smith. I love you. Oh I love you to God. God. Magomed's gonna be 17 and two by the end of that. I night. Got, oh God, I hate to say it, but I got my. Oh God. I like the differing of opinions. Anthony Smith, dude, he's been com. I sorry, Jobins. Uh, yeah, our cameras keep going out on us. We thought it was just our first one. Now it's our second one. So. <laughs> They're probably just old and it's time. Time to get tossed into a fire. Yeah, let's toss these freaking cameras so, into the fire. Yeah, the only thing that sucks when that happens is that the video loses before the audio. And then when I do a page, for some reason, it doesn't like a picture to where I could just do the audio and the picture. It wasn't working last time when I was doing the editing. Maybe I'll try and fix it this time. So sometimes it just cuts out the audio sometimes before we lose it. Oh. So we actually do lose stuff. And then I don't know. Like, we weren't able to come back right where exactly where we were. We could just restart that. Uh, oh, no, no. We won't restart. We'll just go on to the next one. Derek gotcha. Lewis. That's a bigger fight. Sorry, anyways. Jobins. Literally a bigger fight because they're heavyweights. Derek Lewis versus Sergey Pavlovich. Dude, Derek Lewis is 26-9. One, uh, one, one, one no contest. Sergey Pavlovich is 15-1, and one, though. He's kind of coming up looking kind of scary. Oh, yeah. Derek Lewis is coming off that loss. Yeah. yeah. Who did he just lose to? A tie? Yeah. To he lost elbows. Damn. Ties up there though. I mean, I I don't know, man. I'm thinking Derek Lewis takes it still. He always he always kind of 
just knocks anybody out. He just yeah. can always do it. That's a good heavyweight fight. I like this fight. Man, 15 and 1, dude. I know. It's really scary. That's interesting. How do, so, okay, if he wins, how do you think he wins against Derek? So he gets him down. I think he gets him down. That's your best bet against a guy that can kill you. Yeah. Curtis Blades didn't want to do it, and then once he did, he fucking uppercutted him. Well, that's because Curtis Blades only went for the one free. His, his, he didn't surprise. Damn. He had to. You should mix it up, probably. What am I saying? I'm an MMOA coach now, you know. Yeah, right. Curtis couch Blades coaches. is a freaking G. We're couch coaches. Curtis Blades is a G. Mm -hmm. But Derek Lewis killed him. Yeah. Okay. And That's true. he's going to freaking kill Sergey. That's how it is. And if he doesn't kill Sergey, Sergey subs him. I'm going Sergey. I'm sorry, Derek. I love you, but I'm going Sergey. All right. Ooh, I like this fight. I like this fight a lot. Brendan Miranda versus Kai Carr of France. This one's so exciting, dude. Kai, I know. Yeah. Um, I think uh, Kai's going to bring a little dog fight out of Brendan. I do think it's going to be a little dog fight. Do you think Brandon does any wrestling, incorporates any wrestling, tries to take down the fight? I think so, but I think Brendan gets up. Hold on, did you say Kai or Brendan? Brandon Moreno. Yeah. Oh, I see. I think Kai does. And I think you I think see Kai does? Brandon just gets up. Man, because I think that fight that he had with Askar Askarov was so close. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. Like, I, it, wasn't, it was like a win, but could have went either way. Want, I'm going Brendan. I want Brandon. Brandon. Brandon Moreno? Yeah. I'm going. I'm rooting for Kai Car of France. You're, ooh, really? Just because I, I like the guy. And seeing him get a title shot? That'd be yeah, cool. that would be cool. That would be cool. And, you know, we've seen Brandon there already. Uh, damn, what a fucking fight card we got. Sorry, Dude. Jovens. We might have missed the... Uh, Jovens, we might have missed the... Uh, Pantoja versus Pant Perez. Yeah, sorry if you guys missed that one. He said we both said Pantoja would yeah. beat Perez. Yeah, hopefully we'll get it back. We'll see. We'll see. Or you heard it twice there. <laughs> <laughs> Women's Ooh. bantamweight championship. They just got done hosting freaking dude. I want the man. ultimate fighter as the coaches. I want Amanda to win so bad. Really? Yeah, I do. I kind of dude. Did you see the Juliana Pena and her daughter was behind her it on the? It was the cutest thing. It's in the, the world. cutest it was thing. The cutest Too bad your mom pissed me off with the things she says. So <laughs> your I'm mom's sorry. getting wrecked. Yeah. Saturday night. You killed it. You killed it. It was the most adorable thing. It really was. It, that was a moment. That was a moment in the, in the history of UFC. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Very adorable. <laughs> How cool would Sean be if he, if if fucking little oh, Plano was there? Yeah, that would be so she adorable. Was all like, I'd be like. <gasps> I'd probably cry. You know what I mean? It would be a moment. It'd be a moment. It was a moment. So, but yeah, you still got to go down. You got to go down for the shit you've said. It's basic. Everyone else has said what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Be yourself. Be unique. You you did a great job. You beat her and just be yourself. She couldn't. I think she, I think Juliana Pena is gonna win again. Oh God, that would be sad. I think it's the changing. It's it's the turning of the tide. I'm bro. going, Amanda. Let's go, Amanda. Things happen. People people get older and they get out of the sport. I think Amanda's about to retire soon. Mm. We'll see. We'll see, bud. That's that's how the right, fight the, game goes. Is that the main event? That was the main event, dude. Holy fuck! That was the I card. Like that card. Like is, that card is insane, bro. Yeah. Yeah. All right, what else we got, dude? What else do we have? The Gray Man with freaking the Russo, Anthony and Joe Russo from the Marvel movies, dude. It was the most amazing movie I'd seen in the Gray Man Jobins. It's James Bond meets uh Triple X, Vin Diesel's Triple X, and it's Ryan Gosling as the guy who fucking is a badass. It's seriously one of the, if not my favorite Netflix movie out. And they're making a whole like cinematic universe behind the Gray Man. CIA Dude, I couldn't meets James take the Bond. writing. I couldn't take the writing. The, it was fine. It was Dude. perfectly acceptable for the fanfare. It was action backed. Dude, those lines though, man. Dude, Chris Evans is Lloyd Hansen, the fucking uh, main guy that's bad, and he's like, "Oh, I don't do it. The CIA can't do it, but I can." And he does the evil stuff. There's freaking bat gun fights, battles happening, fights happening. It's like some Family Guy shit. A Family Guy episodes where Peter's like. Fighting up, the chicken? Yeah, and he's coming up with all different ending quote lines. He's like, I'll have what he's having. <laughs> like, that's the type of shit that the whole movie was doing. What's I, wrong with that? Dude. People have fond memories of, like, 80s action movies, 
And to me, this is like hits that it note. Was so hard this to deal this with. hits that note of like Rocky Four. It was. This like, hits that note of like Rambo First Blood. Who, who's that guy you, know? you love from fucking Saturday Night Live that got his own little show and movie when he has his little skits and Mc, MacGruber? Yeah, that was like a serious take on MacGruber. MacGruber, another '80s. You know, <laughs> we're going back to it now. It's just mm. great action, mm. and there's not enough of it. You know what? And in Extraction with Chris Hemsworth, Netflix, keep killing it with Another the action one. movies. Keep producing these action films, because you know your boy's going to be watching them. Dude, if we could get Sean O'Malley in a freaking The Gray Man movie, and he's fighting Ryan Gosling, who plays Six, who is the freaking ex-convict turned agent. That would be fire. Or, well, I'd rather him be in the Chris Pratt one fighting Chris Pratt. Ooh, dude, the Chris Pratt but, Terminal List. If you haven't seen Terminal List, let's go. But I want Sean to kick his ass and get away. And then we never see him again. So that way it's like, oh, Sean didn't die. Because, you know, it wasn't Cowboy and he died. Yeah. Yeah, we can't have Sean die. So Sean dude. And, and Chris Pratt's always like, man, that guy, when that guy kicked my ass, you know. Bro, Ryan Gosling played in six as a criminal already who's got out of prison to get his deal and be in the CIA. Sean could play a freaking ex-convict guy, too, because he mm -hmm. got the tats and the, the hair. Oh, yeah. It would be badass. Dude, I want to make like a, a heist movie or something, something to do. Yeah, or like a I four do. brothers type movie heist mixed where Sean's the lovable character. Mm -hmm. And this is the one where he actually does die because it hits. Yeah, it's like, oh, shit. And he's got his braids and it's colored and he's got his tats and he's the funny one. But he's also extremely badass. It would hit. It would is this slap. death scene really sad? It's gonna make it's you cry, fuck. right? It's gotta it, be tear jerker. It hits the whole squad. The whole the whole squad becomes different after. Yeah, it would have a huge effect. Yes. It'd probably be if the movie's like you know a two hour movie. It's probably he's the first death of the squad. So he's in he's in forty minutes of the movie. 40, 40 to forty five minutes. He's gone. I'm sorry, man. It needs to be a whole series of movies, and he needs to die at the like end. Oh, okay. And See, then I, I like, thought this was just a movie. If you're doing like, okay, if you were doing like an eight episode series, I would say the fourth episode or the third episode. Yeah, and he sacrificed himself. Like fourth, fourth, you know, like yeah. all the good guys get away because he stopped the bad guy from killing them all. Yeah. And they're like, we're getting his ass back. Ooh, and like Sean kind of saves the day. Yeah. When he dies. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Sean could hold, I've been telling Sean for a long time he could be an actor. We've always wanted to be directors and screenplay writers. We can make it happen one day, maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. But man, it's going to be like an God, action I'm movie so like that. I'm so fucking nervous that fucking camera's going to go out on us on any second, Jobins. Jesus, I'm so sorry. I know. We're going to be out of this motherfucker soon and hopefully be leveling up soon. And uh, we'll get some new cameras and shit and we'll be leveling up. Sean's Jobins. I can't thank Sean enough for this opportunity he's given us. Sonos moving down the first. We've actually been in the house now, the Jobin house, and it's fucking incredible. Uh, it's life-changing. It's a golden ticket to the Willy Wonka factory, but it's the Jobin factory. We got so much planned. We got so many things that we want to start getting going that we're going to do. It's only it's not even the beginning, really. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I look at this as a journey through our the rest of our lives, so like we're not even getting started. We love all you guys, and we thank all you guys for all the fucking support and hype. Uh, it means a lot. Mm -hmm. It was fun uh, doing the little videos and everyone was reaching out congratulating me. So it appreciates it. And thank, yeah. and thank you to the fucking champ because uh, we're not going to let you down. Shit's going to be legendary. Oh my God. Just getting it better every day. Evolution's gradual, baby. Let's go. Yes, every sir. day we stepping it up. Yes, sir. Small steps. And you can do it too, Jovens. Just small steps at a time. Just believe. Believe and achieve. Yeah, man. Yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. We working out so hard. And then I do the, the oh my God. I wrote it down because it was so hard, Jovens. It's so hard to do this exercise that Tim I'm and trying Sean to. Sean wouldn't believe it. Oh Tim my God. Oh my God. Dead hands. Dead hands on a pull up bar. I've been, because I've been like trying to get my grip strength for jujitsu to be better with breaking grips and stuff. I'm like, let me do my forearm strength. He's this guy who's Chris Herrera on YouTube. He's a great training guy. He's like, before you do one hand dead hands, make sure to do two hand dead hands first. If you can do it for 60 seconds, you're good. I'm dying at like 30 seconds, Jovens. I can't. And uh, dead hands, it's just you hanging off the pull up bar. And I don't know. I thought, oh, I can do like 15 pull ups. This should be nothing. I'm dying at, it at would 45 be hard. seconds. I can't imagine holding all my weight up. 
I would love to hear who whoever has the longest freaking dead hang on the pull-up bar because that would be impressive. If you get two minutes on that, you're who freaking Who do you think can do the longer uh, hang, Sean or Tim? Sean. I think Sean. Sean. Just because he's lighter, mm-hmm. but I feel like they're both really strong. I don't know. I might be – I don't know. I think Tim. You think Tim? I think Tim. Interesting. Yep. I think the old bowl could probably hang on a little longer. Oh, we yeah. have to see that. Now we got to find oh, out. I got to know. Yep, we'll find out. Everyone, yes. have a competition. See how long you can do it. Let's yeah, get time. Call them out. Call Sean and Tim out. Yeah, I'm calling, t- uh, I'm calling freaking Tim and Sean out right now. Yeah. Let's see how long they can hang. Yeah. Dude, uh, the new Suicide Boys album. Holy shit, Joe Evans, it's fire. They keep dropping fucking fire albums. Sean and Tim keeps going, oh, if you listen to sad music, that makes you depressed. And then when I tell them that it doesn't, he, they laugh at me. And I'm like, I, when I listen to Peep, when I listen to Suicide Boys, they fucking hype me up. I don't get depressed. When I'm sad and I listen to them, it helps you just re- feel where something's relating. You, I don't know. It just hits a spot and I get out of and you just feel better. It's like, a ah, there it is. It's relief. With any kind of music, if you understand music and the music that gets to you the way it does, the way music gets to me, I'm a very music's a very important thing in my life. Mm-hmm. Dude, honestly, dance music's the best music. I'm oh, just so? popping Fari's well, movement and still dance. like a G6, like a G6. Da, 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 Dude, da. dancing terrifies me. Yeah, it's I, funny. It petrifies me. I, it's like, it, it, I can't even talk. Like, even just like if a girl was to go, oh my God, I will fuck the shit out of you if you just dance with me. I would begin to sweat. I'd be so <laughs> nervous. Dude, I'd be so Hey, man, nervous. honesty is key. But, I mean, there's other things to do besides dance. You know? Oh, God, I know. But dancing just to me, like, because I know I'm so bad at it, that it would just be hard. Bad be dancing so hard. can be funny still. I know, but, oh, God. Something about it. Cre- I shout, shout out. Hey, good for you for being able to just go out and do whatever it is that you're doing, and you're doing it in front of everybody. Dude, and they play great music at the gym that's dance music. I was listening to Kesha's TikTok on the treadmill. I was like, man, I could keep running for days. Oh, yeah. TikTok. Yeah, this stuff goes hard. Shout yeah. out, Kesha. Yeah. All right, uh, this is old school Jobins, something you might you might not. Tony Doe. If I said Tony Doe, would you know who that is? Who that, though? I don't know who Tony Doe is. He was Doe the is. brother and leave it to beaver. <laughs> leave it to beaver. Leave it to beaver. Wally. Did you watch that show back in the day? Never. Never really? seen an episode of Leave It to Beaver. Never my own, seen an episode. You've never watched the old school black and white Leave It to Beaver? Never. Okay, what about the Andy Griffin show? Never. Really? I've heard of both the shows. I've never watched a single whole episode. Oh, my God. You've never watched any Andy Griffin? Mm-mm. Andy Griffin. Jobins. These shows are black and white. They're even old for me. But I grew up. So before, all the way up to like 18, 19, I didn't have cable in my room. I only had fucking 2, 4, 6, 11, 30, and like 40-something. Until you were how old? Dude, like 18. Really? Yeah, dude. But I didn't mind. I didn't give a fuck. Because I liked Channel 11 because, you know, it was like King and Queens, Friends, and all that kind of shit. Uh, and then I forget, I think it was like 30 or something. They played the Andy Griffith show. Or maybe it was like one of like fours or something. And they played all these shows. The Monsters, Leave it to Beaver, Andy Griffith, MASH, I Love Lucy. And they'd filter them. You know what I mean? And I enjoyed those. And I enjoyed watching them. And I, I watched them as I grew up. Mm-hmm. And, dude, they slap. I mean, I've seen I Love Lucy before. Dude, you need to, Jobins. It, you need to go back and watch Andy Griffin show. You need to go back and watch Leave it to Beaver. You need to go back and watch The Monsters. And MASH. 100%. Go do your history. Go do your history. And it's crazy because there's never going to be a show that's going to beat the record that MASH has for like most people that have watched it when it aired. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just because yeah. people have so much more access to different ways of watching you, stuff. I guarantee it, Jobins, this motherfucker, I could get him a little stoned and we could watch some Leave it to Beaver and this dude would start crying. I guarantee it. Start crying? Yeah, you would start crying. Dude, it is a heartwarming, it's a life lesson heartwarming family show. I got Scrubs all day. I can watch Scrubs. That's, dude, this is old school classic. JD and, and you Turk know who you it. are? You know who you are? You're Eddie Haskell in fucking Leave it to Beaver. Oh, who's that? Well, let me tell you, Jobins. Eddie Haskell, which they have made a uh, colored version, 
with the Shooter McGavin guy. <laughs> Wait, from Happy Gilmore? Yeah, he's the dad in Leave It to Beaver in the colorized version. I own it on B- DVD. Wait, what? They have a colorized version of Leave It to Beaver? Yeah, well, a movie. The the black and white was a show. And it's just like a remake kind of yeah, deal? Yeah, but well, it's just a movie. It's like an hour and a half movie of Leave It to Beaver. So was the Shooter fire. McGavin that in the original? Fire. No, 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 but that movie's still fire, too. The colorized version of Leave It to Beaver is fucking fire, too. Sure. Yeah, it is. It is. Doubt. But Leave It to Beaver, dude, Eddie Haskell... He would come over, and he was friends with Wally. 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 Not Wally. Wally. Yeah, Wally. He was friends with Wally, right? And he'd be all polite in front of uh, the mom, Mrs. Beaver, in front of all the people. (laughs) They're the beavers. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The beavers. I got a show show idea, guys. It's going to be great. The beavers. Mr. Beaver, Miss Beaver, and you got the little beavers. The beavers. That's a real show, guys. They really passed that. <laughs> what about Mrs. Beaver? You just sidetracked me, dude. Ooh, you've never made me laugh this much on a pod before. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Now I feel weird saying it, you piece of shit. Just like I feel weird wearing <laughs> shoes in the sauna now. Damn it. Hey, shoes in the sauna are fine. <laughs> nope. Okay, it's hot nope. in the sauna. No, it's My not. My feet burn. No, it's not. It's frowned upon. It's not politically correct. But yeah, uh-huh. So we are on Mrs. So, Beaver. Oh, yeah. So Eddie Haskell's all fucking po- nice and shit in front of Mrs. Beaver. But then when they're gone, he's a fucking wise guy, fucking shit starter. Oh, okay. That's you, bud. He's got two different faces that's, on. Yeah, that's you, bud. <laughs> I have to no. watch this now. No, oh, yeah, you should because leave it to Beaver, dude. Leave it to the fucking Beavers. <laughs> Fuck you. Now I can't. Re- now I can't read the title of the show right anymore. You <laughs> piece of shit. All right. All right. What else you got? <laughs> <laughs> That was, well, I mean, we never oh, even talked about. We never even talked about Sean versus Peter Yawn. Peter Yawn. What the fuck? I love that nickname you came up with. I know. Well, I don't know about that. I don't know if people can see it. Oh, you mean that's, I'm sure someone had said someone that before. Probably had it said Peter it. Yawn. Yawn. Like, it's fucking too easy. Boring. It's too easy. He's, and he's about to get slept. That's oh, what he's about really to be asleep. About. Yeah, that's what he's going to be saying. He's going to be yawning because he just woke up from a nap. <laughs> yeah. Jobins. Holy shit. How fucking exciting is this? I wish we had gotten a pot out earlier when. The, sh- the news broke. Um, I'm so fucking excited for Sean. This is, I was talking to him in his backyard, and I'm like, dude, this one fucking feels different. Doesn't it feel different? Mm-hmm. It feels different. And I'm so grateful that Dana White and all them guys, Sean Shelby, they, they gave Sean this opportunity. Um, this is a moment, Jobins. This is a moment in the path of Sean's greatness. And I really believe this is a perfect matchup for our boy. Uh, we know the game plan to beat Peter, and Sean's gonna fucking do it. Mm-hmm. He's too fast, too strong, and he's got too many. He's got too many different ways. Peter's got. I don't even know if Peter's really got a way to beat Sean, and it's it, everyone's like obviously people who are like against Sean or whatever. They'd be like, hey, Peter's a better boxer because he's an amazing boxer. Guess what? Sean's a better kickboxer, and he's longer, and he can get out of the way of those little T-Rex arms. 100%. So get ready, boxer boy. Get ready, because the kickboxer's coming to kick that fucking head off. And don't underestimate our boy's cardio either. To punch up Chris Montino that many times and get that record, to see him spar like that live, and then, like, the next person's fresh, and you know he's he's not going to get tired. Oh, and Sean's fired up about this. And that was so great about being in that aerial Hawani being there live i would have watched it anyway but hearing sean what he's saying i'm like dude not you know not many people sound like that in their interviews like Mm -hmm. you're saying some real shit like some that was a fucking great interview that you just did and his mindset that he's going in with this fight against peter yan is brilliant and the group of people that he has around tim takino brandon uh dan garner who i we just met this past week these are great people that are helping him you know, this is a team thing, and 
seeing Sean more motivated now than ever, especially when he gets a name like Peter Yan, how do you not wake up every day going, oh my God, I got this fight. Mm -hmm. Look at this fucking fight I got. This is so fucking exciting. And even with all those resources at his disposal, like people like Dan Gardner, people that are nutrition, like all the... You have to be as disciplined as Sean to really oh, yeah. get the maximum benefits from it. And then which so, is so fucking hard. Oh, 100%. Oh, my God. Holy shit. It's like, how do they do it? Mm -hmm. And then how does this fucking colored hair guy just keep doing what he's doing all day every day? Just keep fucking hopping around like he's some fucking rabbit. I know. And it must piss people off because they like assume he's a punk or something. Yeah. And they just don't even they know. There's no levels to the game. How hard this motherfucker is actually working, which is fun. Let him keep thinking. Because uh -huh. guess what? He's too fast, dude. And he's, he hits like a fucking truck. Our boy hits like a truck. It's scary. Just wait till some of those can open, like those so-called candy wrecked, or maybe even future tamps themselves one day, mm -hmm. just because of how good, like, you know, our boy yeah. is. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. I mean, Charles Oliveira was a, can uh, a freaking, like, journeyman for so long. Yeah. Well, what's awesome is Sean's getting, now with this Peter one, like, dude, they're just going to keep coming. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's going to be crazy. And then I just really hope that uh, everything goes well with the Dillashot and uh, Aljamain Sterling fight. They have a good, decisive win. Whoever wins, we move on. Hopefully everything goes well to Sean, and then we fucking see what happens. We can't get too far. You, know, you can't think like that. Mm -hmm. You got uh, the biggest fight right here, baby. You know what I mean? This is the biggest fight. This is the biggest moment. This is it. And like I was, dude, it just feels different. And this Peter Yan really hasn't got his ass kicked by the current champion, you know? It's yeah. like, what could have happened that first fight? They're and one and one. Yeah, right. Well. So, but freaking, yeah. let's go. I'm very, and I, I, I like how a lot of people are kind of counting Sean out in the comments. <laughs> I, th I think it's funny. Because what happens, it's going to be monumental. Dude, I hope he's a huge underdog so I can bet on him and make some money, too. Because right? I'm, like, so confident. It's I'll be like, so yeah, this is the easiest $100 I'll ever bet. Right? Isn't it crazy? It's like we've never had the opportunity to bet on Sean because he's always been the fucking guy. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised. I would put him as the favorite still. <laughs> wouldn't that be funny? That'd be fucking awesome. <laughs> I'd be like, fuck yeah. Let's go. And in Abu Dhabi, how fucking cool. I was glad that he did that London trip and he got a good flight in, you know what I mean? Got a good taste of it so he can get... I think that was like some. I think some things happen for a reason. I think that flight to London was uh, happened for a reason, so that he can get a little taste of a a, long, a super long flight. Mm -hmm. So everything's lining up. So yeah, Damn. I can keep going. I'm excited for it, Jobins. I know you guys all are. We'll be in the new house by then, dude. Who knows what's fucking gonna be going on? But yeah, damn, we're already at 50 minutes too. Damn, it flies so, yeah. by when you're having a good time. It flies good by, baby. This was a good pod. Jobins, we're back. Hopefully get back into a routine of things. Only a couple more pods here, dude. We're going to start packing up. Sean told us we can fucking start moving into the new house ASAP if we wanted. So uh, who knows how many pods we got left in here. I know. This was 85. Like, yeah. uh, can we? Yeah. We're on the road to 100. It's going to be insane. Yeah, we thank you, everyone, yeah, for being thank here. You. Yeah, thank you guys for all the love and support. Obviously, we couldn't do this without you guys. And very soon... After we get moved into the new house and we get some settled things, we get on into a routine of everything, we are going to get some merch started, and we're going to start doing that. So, And we can't wait. We got lots of cool ideas. They're going to be endless. And, uh, yeah, Joe Bernard being to the moon. We love you guys. Hope you have a good day. Go. Deuces.